Peter, you're my only hope. If the Star Wars movies were a horse. Oh yeah, no, I don't get this either. I don't watch Star Wars, so this is completely lost on me. The first Star Wars trilogy concluded the story. Afterwards came the prequel trilogy, which showed the beginning of the story. The episode seven movie was a continuation fairly similar to the previous two trilogies, thus represented as a part of the brown horse. However, following that episode, uh, following that, Jesus, there's, he needed a calm after following that. My brain just totally went forward. Episode eight was very different from the style of the previous movies in various ways, represented as a zebra, different appearance than a horse. Finally, episode nine was completely different and made virtually no sense tonally or narratively, represented as an off-color horse that doesn't exist in real life. You could say episode 9 was ass backwards. <laughs> oh, funny guy. Funny guy, but I don't get that one either. Peter, explain this comment. Peter? I don't get it. Teen left with broken nose and fractured jaw for refusing to answer, are you a boy or a girl? Well, that's not nice, Professor Oak. We don't have to answer that question anymore. Just let me go hunt Pokemon. I didn't need, I didn't need Peter for that one. Cool Chris here. Professor Oak asks if you're a boy or a girl in the beginning of the Pokemon games and you're prompted to input your name in order to start your journey. The gag here is that the teen refused to answer and got his shit rocked. Well, we don't know. We don't know if it's his shit. It's their shit until they answer the question. So I don't get this. Parents and the mystery of the calendar. Oh boy, I gotta zoom in for this one. So by the third, where are we getting? September 20th and the, she's all happy. He's shaken. You know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm, this one's missing me. Peter here. The joke is sex. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> I still don't get it. I don't get how that makes it. I don't get how that's a sex joke either, actually. I, it's, you know, this one's a little lost on me. There's two variations. One was how in traditional Japan, crab usually signifies fertility, and it's clear that the parents are trying for another baby. Hence why the man is eating crab rice. Is he eating crab rice? Ah, okay, we're starting to piece things together. All right. Or the more simpler version, the wife wants sex, but she's too intense to handle in bed. So the husband has to gain a lot of weight in order to deal with her. And even then he only eventually convinces when she starts to get really impatient. So he has to have like Batman prep time for the sack. And he loses the weight in one day? That's tough, buddy. Oh, no, three days go by until it's checked again. Uh, so I'm assuming they're on the 21st, and so they boinked on the 20th. I'm guessing that's what that means. Imagine the trouble she has trying to introduce herself in France. Je m'appelle, uh, Peter's French cousin here. Je m'appelle is French for my name is. Introducing herself, she would say, Bonjour, je m'appelle, je m'appelle, which would sound like, Hello, my name is, my name is Slim Shady. Well, you know what Slim Shady would say? He'd go, Chicka, chicka, just like that. Just like that. That's him right there at the bottom. You summoned him. Help! Why is Domino's busy, Peter? The Pentagon Domino's is busier than usual. This is not a drill. Uh, the FBI assigned with monitoring Peter here. Back in the 1990s, an easy way to predict if a major American event was about to happen was to see if the amount of pizzas being delivered to government buildings, like the Pentagon, had spiked. This method was able to predict events such as Operation Desert Storm and the Monica Lewinsky story. Basically, the meme is saying that another major American event is about to happen. By the way, the method in question is called the Washington Pizza Index. Uh-oh, you spiked my curiosity. I'm Googling it, the Washington Pizza Index. Oh, wow, yeah, there's articles back in like 98 about it. That's so cool. I opened up a Washington Post archive uh, about the, the Washington Pizza Index. The bigger the crisis and the more time the government staffers hole up in their offices, the more pizza they eat. And they even included a picture, and I don't know if you have to go find this, but if you want to include it, I think this is a really cool picture. Just look up Washington Pizza Index, and it's a Washington Post article. Um, but there's a picture included of an aide to House Majority Whip Tom DeLay, who was a Texas Republican. Uh, he had just a straight up stack of pizzas during an impeachment deb debate. So yeah, there's a direct correlation between local pizza joints and American crises in the Capitol. They have a graph here as well. Hold on. It shows at Domino's to the White House uh, during a normal three day period, the White House would uh, order about $550 
worth of, of uh, pizza. However, three days after the Lewinsky story broke in January, they spent $2,600. And the same is reflected in Capitol Hill, a typical three-day period for... Uh, Domino's sales was seventeen hundred bucks, uh, but during the nineteen ninety five government shutdown, uh, three days during that shutdown in November, the sales spiked to ninety one hundred nine thousand one hundred dollars. What a fascinating little correlation! That's really, I mean, it, it makes sense. Pizza is a nice food to eat. It's greasy. It's soaking up all that stress. So I, I get that. But that's just such a neat correlation. And hey, if you run a pizza joint, you might want to look into a uh, building by the Capitol. I don't know, Peter. I hate to be picky, but I'd love to take care of a Pokemon that's level five or under. People who don't know, people who know. Did he lose a kid? Isn't that NPC a widow? Oh, yep. <laughs> That feels lonely and wants a Pokemon to take care uh, to keep him company. And after some time, the NPC passes away, leaving a letter thanking the player for the Pokemon, giving the Pokemon back leveled up and with max friendship. Oh, what's well, such a nice thing to do for the old man? PETA, please! Guys be like, I can fix her. Oh, that's Kim Yo Jong, sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong Un. She's considered even more ruthless and devious than her brother and is poised to take over the country if anything ever happens to him. <laughs> but she's hot, so men will accept her flaws and try to get with her anyway. Neat, I don't even have anything funny to add, that's just, I didn't know that. <laughs> and now I do. PETA, why is Ash purple? Pokemon be like, hey, my name is Misty. I'm 11. What a coincidence, I'm 11 too. 23 years later, hey, my name is Serena. I'm 11. What a coincidence, I'm 11 too. But see, they're TV characters, they're ageless. They're gonna be 11 their whole lives. Like, it's gonna be 20, 2865, 2000, you know, in the future. Ash Ketchum is gonna be perpetually 11 years old. It's kind of, it's a hor horrible existence for him. I think it is to signify that Ash shouldn't be saying that since he's chronologically older than the new characters he hangs out with, or that he's under a spell that prevents him from aging up. I mean, if we're talking about the meme, chronologically he wouldn't be, but at the same time, TV magic states that he's not allowed to be any older than 11. It's not like Chowder, where they showed Chowder as an adult. Crocodile in a nursery? Uh, explain please. Get, you rascal, get! Heaven knows how he keeps getting in here, Benny, but you better count him. This is a panel from The Far Side, a legendary comic that often used silly or absurdist humor. The humor is in the crocodile somehow entering the nursery multiple times and eating at least some babies. Hence one of the nurses casually suggesting they have to count. To add to this, crocodiles will carry babies in their mouths, and if I recall correctly, will sometimes adopt the babies of other species. If you look closely, you can see what looks like an arm or fingers poking out of the croc's mouth. Uh, I think that could be a tooth. No, I think that's a baby. You see how, uh, in the back, that, uh, crib is missing a child? He's adopted one. To add to the crocodile legion. Peter, I have a request. I've invented a trauma-powered light bulb. Is it practical? Just watch. Excuse me, young adult. Would you hold this, please? Sure. One seven seven zero one three. What? Is Kenny editing this? Kenny? Kenny, what is this? Kenneth? This is a reference to a very disturbing- <laughs> Kenny! <laughs> Metamorphosis, if I remember correctly. I'm not gonna call you a degenerate like that, Kenny. I'm sorry. Edit, how did I get 2K upvotes because of You're on Reddit, pal. Also, I wanted to clarify, I've never, <laughs> I've never read 177013 or the Metamorphosis. <laughs> I've never done it. <laughs> so please excuse my mistakes. My knowledge comes from the meme culture. Thanks for the 2K. That's also the name of a story that is extremely weird, lol. Read me this. Penny has five children. The first is named January. Second kid is February. Her third is called March. Fourth is April. What is the name of the fifth? Penny Jr. The child's fifth name is what? Note the period instead of question mark. <laughs> Uh, that's solid. That's a good. That's a good one. I like that. I'm not a Harry Potter fan, so I don't get the joke. Left wing, left wing literature, 2013. My brain almost said left ring. Right wing literature, 2023. Ah, 
Ah, I like that. That's a good one. Leftists originally loved the books because they have a few slight insults towards righties. Righties originally hated the books because they are more predispositioned to be religious and hardcore zealots hate magic and fantasy and see it as the devil's influence. I ain't, I ain't believe in no Hogwarts. That's the devil's potion right there. Magic? That's the devil's tune. I believe in God, Jesus Christ. Jesus turned water into wine. Satan turned my wife into swine. That's how I distinguish the two. J.K. Rowling has made statements, funded laws and such that have changed this. Most of which are to deal with the LGBTQ, mainly the T part. So the righties began ignoring the magic and sly insults. When the leftists threw her out completely, she's now known as a turf by the leftists, trans exclusionary radical feminist. This term means you are against trans people. Hence the whole like exclusionary part. Yeah, I get it. We don't, we don't like JK here. That's why my literature as a kid, granted this is like elementary school, but I was Junie B. Jones, baby. We are a Barbara Park appreciation station. Rest in peace, Miss Park. Pentaho, is this the something? Oh my God. Is the something wrong with the blue ice cream? The way that was written just, Oh, oh, that slapped my head silly. All of this happened because of her. At the beginning of the pandemic, people would do challenges where they would go to a store and lick the ice cream, and then put it back on the shelf. They're saying it's her fault for spreading the virus because she was the first to do this stupid challenge, which probably helped the virus spread even faster than it would have otherwise. That's bluebell ice cream, baby. Anyway, nothing's wrong with the ice cream, except for the lady tongue in it. 30 seconds. That's all you could last was 30 seconds. The zebra is from on the package of fruit stripe. Oh my God. This is the way people write sometimes really messes with my brain when I read it out loud. Like when I read it in my head, I add what's missing. But when I read it out loud, it just kind of, I'm reading right from the, sc the, the, the screen, you know? The zebra is from on the package of fruit stripe gum, which notoriously loses its flavor quickly. As the best 30 seconds of my life though. Hey, if that's the, ze if that's the claim to fame, it's gonna be quick, but it's gonna be memorable. I don't mind. <laughs> That's terrible. Bowl of water and rocks? Explaining to him why I need to set an alarm to put a bowl of water and some rocks outside Monday night. A piece of rose quartz shaped like Peter Griffin here. This is referring to the practice of making moon water and other such Western bastardizations of traditional paganism, wherein a superstitious individual with low scientific literacy will place various materials like rocks, crystals, and water outside during a full moon to charge them with the moon's energy. Not only is moon water a great way to increase increase your utility bill, but it's also an effective way to show both your neighbors and the internet your fundamental dearth of knowledge concerning the natural world. Thanks, Ghetto Ceratops. <laughs> PETA? Why does she say no? I'm confused. Have you met my son Sebastian? No. The redhead woman is Robin, a character in the game Stardew Valley who runs the carpenter shop. Often when you greet her, she'll try to introduce you to her son Sebastian, the black haired boy, who lives with her and is a romanceable character. The dialogue option can sometimes happen even if you've already married Sebastian and had multiple children with him, which the comic pokes fun of. Oh, it's a Stardew comic? Oh dude, I need to play Stardew Valley again. It's been a while since I played it. I should, uh, I should run a stream of that sometime. That game's a lot of fun. I don't get it. Demi Lovato dressed up as Snow White for Halloween. <laughs> Snow White? Oh, this is a very hilarious coincidence. Well, Demi White had a very public and tragic struggle with <laughs> addiction. The tweet is implying it's ironic because of this. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it's a little ironic. Rhythm game player. How are you today? Someone. Good. Rhythm game player. Usually in rhythm games, there are scores for each note. In the one I play, there are perfect, great, good, bad, and miss. Good ruins your note streak, at least in the game I play, and is just short of great, which is annoying. In most games, good doesn't break your streak. Instead, it's one away from perfect. The joke is more talking about people who try to hit all perfect in songs. Just so you know, you're playing the wrong game, idiot. Help me, Peter. You're my only hope. If you can understand this, I'm so sorry. Are these Tumblr sexy men? These care- Hey, I got it! I knew this one! Yeah! <laughs> These characters are all Tumblr sexy men. That is, they're not conventionally attractive, but a moderately sized part of Tumblr is super obsessed with them. So basically, if you know this, then this means you use Tumblr a lot, which that's what the meme's saying. I think I only knew Sans and Loki. The person behind Sans is the Onceler, but that's all I've got. Two down after that is the 10th Doctor. I'm not a big Tumblr nerd, but uh, I, I'm i aware of the sexy man trend. I saw the poll that was ran on Twitter like a while ago about it. So let's see if I got this. Okay, I, I had to do a little research to get this right. 
Um, but I'm gonna try to do these with just who I know from the closest to the far. So we got Loki, Sans, my personal favorite. Uh, we got the Onceler. I'm not sure who this dude in the white is. I, I'm pretty sure just with the lineup here, I think that's a Homestuck character. Uh, the, the blonde dude is from, I, uh, I had to look this one up too. That's a uh, dude from Hetalia. I think I said that right. It's like a show about countries. It says Axis Power. Is this a, is this a fucking World War II show? I'm gonna fall down a rabbit hole. I'm gonna fall down a whole rabbit hole. What the fuck is this? Uh, then we got the 10th Doctor. I think that uh, behind the 10th Doctor is like a lady from Star Trek. And then I've got no idea who that is in the back. But yeah, that's, that's what I got. That's my list. How'd I do? Me in science class when my friend goes to wash his hands. He just spilled lithium on his hands. Peter's left testicle here. Hi. Lithium metal goes boom boom in water. Also worth noting in this scene, Daffy is screaming, turn off the water. Does lithium explode in water? Let me look this up. Uh, lithium exploding. And yeah, that's that auto filled in water. All right, let's take a look. I don't know if you're gonna have an image for this, but I, I just want to see this for myself and I'm not gonna pause the recording to look it up. Um, in the particular clip I'm watching, he has an Energizer Ultimate Lithium battery. Oh, is this like a Nile Red video? Okay. I'm just making sure he's taken out the lithium strip, uh, dropped it in water. It's smoking, it's on fire, waiting for the explosion. And there it goes. Look at that folks, so you can- all you need to do is <laughs> stop right there. Babe, wait up. Listen, I don't have a nest. I can hardly feed myself. I am not interested. Spin. <gasps> Spinning is a mating dance. Yeah, they do it when you give them bricks for some reason. They love bricks. They're simple birds. Help, please. A pool of oily sludge blocks your path. A what? Whatever, I'll just walk around it. You rolled a one. The character Denise Crosby was killed by what can only be described as a pool of oily sp uh, sludge. And here it's put in the context of a D&D game where she tried to walk around it, but rolled a one, which results in a critical failure. Rest in peace. Denise Crosby famously left TNG to pursue a movie career that went nowhere and she was killed off by a giant black sludge pile. While in all fairness, she was treated horribly before she left. I'm not gonna go down this rabbit hole. I'm not I'm not gonna do it. I'm, no, normally I'd go out, now, normally I'd do it, but I'm not gonna do it. Peter, I need help. <laughs> Mammals, whether mice or whales, each get about 1.5 billion heartbeats per lifetime. I almost said 15 billion. Number 15, 15 billion heartbeats per <laughs> When a heart races, it consumes just a little bit more of your beats. That's why when I look in your eyes, I know you're the one for me. I know with you, I'll have so many wonderful years. Oh, and they kiss. 30 years later, hey! The man states that humans have 1.5 billion heartbeats and that when the heart races, you lose them faster. He then says that for that reason, he knows he'll live a long life, implying that his heart does not race around her. She only realizes the true meaning of his lion 30 years later. I thought it was that he loves her, but in the last panel, she's alone because his heart beat faster than hers. So he was in love, but she wasn't. I guess that's the, you know, fun part about art. It's, it's subjective to its meaning. Peter, if this is a dirty joke, what do you do for work? Uh, it's complicated. So I just said it's complicated and changed the subject. What's complicated about it? Nurse, what's the status of those peaches? Coming right up, boss. It's not a dirty joke. The joke is that his job is complicated and hard to explain the circumstances of why is in that position. What's so difficult to explain? I work as a rat surgeon at the local rat pizzeria. Uh-uh-uh. Assistant to the rat surgeon. Anytime I see a rat, I give him a New York accent. I can't help it. I don't even think that's New York. That's just like vague Northeast. Saw this in a group chat and I don't know anything about Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift fans and, and doggy. Hey everyone, Peter's tour manager here. It's a common joke that Taylor Swift fans are mostly comprised of inexperienced white girls that don't perform well at all. Hope you can read through the quotes. Peter, why do transgender people hate swimming? Yeah, I don't know, I just hate swimming. Oh, no, I get this one, cause it could, oh, no, I. you know what? We'll let the panel, like the next thing, explain it, but I get what's being said here. Swimming often involves removing clothing or changing into more revealing swim 
swimsuits, which can be dysphoric for some people, as most swimming attire is quite gendered. Also, if you're a trans woman in the closet, it's likely you've shaved your legs, but you don't want to reveal that to your friends or family. And in trans men's case, you're either disappointed for being unable to have a swimsuit like other boys because boobs, or just because a swimsuit reveals the curves too much because boobs too bad bottom parts with it. So yeah, it's just a whole mess. I can understand that. That's, yeah, uh, it, it, it makes sense. I, I feel bad, so I can't like add anything to it to be funny. It's just swimming's fun. I hope that you uh, overcome the dysphoria so you can enjoy some fun in the pool. Do a lap or two, you know, it's fun. PETA, help! God created man. I made them eat, Richard. What the hell is that thing? Gatling gun! The ghost of Peter's hyper-patriotic great-uncle here. Oh, gotcha, let me do a voice for you then. There was a popular term that Lincoln may have freed all slaves, but Samuel Colt made them equal. Because Samuel Colt invented the six-shooter that a small man can use against a big man. The below picture is of Gatlin and his Gatlin gun. That was the first automatic firearm through by legal codes is technically not an automatic. It was supposed to be the invention to end all wars. Nope, we simply innovated. Okay, this has no text, but we can see the photo here. I'll describe it as best I can from top to bottom. Uh, we'll read it from left to right since it seems like that's what we have to do here. Uh, so it's a girl walking home. She has a backpack on and she's approached by a couple of mean looking guys who grab her uh, to apprehend her for some reason. Uh, and then they tie, <laughs> they tie the sleeves of her sweater into knots. So they're just a couple of pranksters. The way I understood it is hand tie equals hand. God damn it, is it? God, no, get it out of here. Just a minuscule aggregate of tomfoolery, possibly some shenanigans as well. That's what I like. The only way out or to untie your sleeves is to take your shirt off. Those bastards. I mean, she was wearing like a sweater vest too, wasn't she? So she would still, yeah, so she would still be covered. It's just, it's uh, annoying and awkward, but you know, preserving like the, uh, there's there's gotta be no, there's gonna be no censorship. It's already taken care of with the, with the vest. You're, you're solid, you're set. Peter, what does the popo have to do with the choo-choo? Cute couple's cut. No! <laughs> oh, no! The cop in the picture had a train ran on her, meaning she f***ed her colleagues. Apparently it was trains, plural. Imagine calling 911 and dispatch is busy pumping someone on the f***ing squadron. Oh, man. On company time. Do they at least run on time? Hey, Peter, not trying to offend anyone, but why are the bird and cow trans? My favorite trope is when someone makes an anthro animal, but without thinking gives them dimorphist features that are the opposite of their gender, accidentally making them transcoded. That's because Otis is a boy cow, but has udders. Boy cow has girl udder, girl bird has bright red coloring like boy bird, I think. Yeah, many bird species have brightly colored males and brown camouflaged females, evolved so the male bird can catch predators' attention and lead them away from the nest. Oh, that's neat. Uh, but it was wrong. <laughs> So why why is it actually? I mean, I just Googled it and it says the same thing that female birds are camouflaged in order to avoid being attacked while nesting. Huh, I mean, if anyone knows why, I'd love to know. I can't seem to find what actually is the reason. Peter, why is this beautiful? Why would it not be normal? This is beautiful. This is normal. The OP thinks this is a beautiful image of people from different cultures bonding over the shared adoration of a cute child. The person replying thinks that's silly because it's just normal for people to think that a baby's cute and you don't need to bring race or culture into it. I think babies are ugly. What does that make me? Normal. Huh? Why do I hear boss music? Ad blockers in Firefox. Web environment integrity. Hey, Peter Copter Tailroader here. Google is proposing a new standard to introduce a method for browsers to verify the integrity of sites they're browsing by requesting verification. Speak, Damien, speak. You've learned the language. Use the words by requesting verification from attesters. This would severely limit the customizability of web browsing experiences, such as a smaller privacy focused browser and ad blockers. Doesn't that go against the whole idea of the internet to begin with? Yes, but Big Corpo wants more money. So we get forced to watch more ads. Yeah, because almost 300 billion in revenue last year wasn't enough for them. I agree with the statement, but I wonder how much that looks like after you pay everyone that works in Big Corpos. Probably still a crazy amount. So I agree with the sentiment. I just like numbers like that when it comes to like how companies run and would love to know what that looks like after costs and expenses. 